This tale is rather recent. In fact, it happened this year and within the Curse of Strahd campaign book. Now, a lot of you probably already know this story because you've been watching along the Dice Camera Action uh, official Dungeons & Dragons uh, live stream where every week myself and a bunch of other YouTubers play D&D with Wizards of the Coast. And we went through the Curse of Strahd campaign. Now, a lot of you probably remember some of my stories from last year and how I always play uh, my created character, my favorite character of all time, D.S. Woodrow, the human rogue. So when I got to play Curse of Strahd with the legendary Chris Perkins and a bunch of my friends, I had to bring D.S. with me. So our adventure started out with the four of us uh, just doing our own thing. And very quickly, we were transported to the land of Barovia. Barovia is a cursed realm that is uh, ruled by Strahd himself a lord who's become a vampire. So this whole place, imagine a place constantly filled with fog and mist and clouds and the sun never truly rises. There's undead everywhere and most people don't even speak Strahd's name out of fear that he himself might come down and turn them also to one of his ghastly minions. And that's where we ended up. And we were trying to mostly find a way to get out of there, but very quickly we, we had a very different goal in mind. Now, through our adventures, one of the things that uh, had happened is we got to uh, a, a, a tower filled with hags, and I won't go too much into that, but we managed to defeat the hags, uh, and they had a special bakery in there. And including this bakery were these little uh, uh, donut kind of things that when someone eats them, they become dazed for uh, several hours, I believe. Now, myself being the crafty rogue that I am, I actually took one of those and held it into my in my pocket, thinking this could be useful later on. And also within that same tower, we found some some necklaces and other pieces of jewelry. And not having a whole lot of money, especially in the land of Barovia, I quickly took those as well to use possibly bartering ships, not necessarily for myself for fortune or gain, that's not really how DS works, but I wanted to have something with me should the need arise. Uh, very quickly, we found our way to the town of Vallaki. Now, Vallaki was uh, another town within Barovia that was under Strahd's domain very much so. It was uh, kind of ruled under an iron fist. Uh, it actually just so happens that one of the main, one of the main sheriffs, more or less, that was there was uh, one of our other party members uh, related brother. Uh, our, my friend Commander Holly plays the tiefling sorcerer Strix and it just so happens that her brother was one of the main bad guys within this town and Strix is a very a very squirrely type person. She uh, gets anxious very very quickly and loses hope very very quickly uh, and, and that's very important for this particular story. So as we enter the Lucky, uh, we come across a, rag, uh, a wagon that um, said Rictavio's, uh, Rictavio's Wonders. It's, it's a sort of traveling band of entertainment and whatever. And we met uh, Rictavio himself along with his faithful companion named Deidre. And Deidre, she was a very kind soul, but she's large, very massive, bound of muscle who could probably easily crush any man's skull within her hand like it was a grape. But she was gentle, she was kind, she was friendly, she liked showing us magic tricks. Uh, and we quickly became friends with her. Uh, she, we called her D for short. D was cool, I liked D a lot. And she quickly grew fond of us and wanted to help us with whatever it was that we were trying to do. And we had very specific locations that we wanted to go to. We were, basically had a, a prophecy told to us that uh, if we all uh, fulfill our own individual destinies, we will get out of Barovia. And that's what we're trying to do. Now within Velaki, word quickly reached uh, Strix's brother, Izek, who wanted us dead. And we were at a tavern and Deidre, or D, uh, being the kind soul that she was, says, uh, I'll go talk to them and stall for time so you guys can get out of here. And we're like, great, that sounds perfect. So D 
walks out the front of the tavern. It's middle of the night, it's very spooky. We can only barely see her through the tavern doors as the torchlight faintly reaches them. We were inside the tavern itself, and uh, the tavern owners, who also liked us because they had no love for Strahd and they had caught wind of what we were doing and they wanted us to help them get out of there and save everything, uh, offered us uh, a sanctuary, a place for us to hide. They said, we have this hidden compartment up in our attic. And there's no way they'll find you up in there. If you go up in there and you hide and you stay hidden, they won't find you. And we're like, that's great. D is buying us time. We can go over and get into there. They won't find us at all. That was our plan. So before we could enact that plan, D outside trying to talk to the guards was uh, uh, try, best to, try, trying her best to charm her, charm them. And again, she was, she was a large, simple-minded person, but again, she liked magic tricks, so she tried to show them a magic trick. She pulls out some cards, she's like, do you want to see a magic trick? The guards, being as they were, had no patience for her and immediately began to attack her. They pulled out their blades and started sticking it into her all over the place. Now, thankfully, D, like I said, was a, a large, hardy person who could take a couple of blades, shake it off, and immediately fight back. But it was her against, well, a dozen guards. She didn't stand a chance. And I could see this from the tavern. So seeing that, but also knowing that I had to keep my friends safe and get out of there, we were stuck. D is getting cut down in front of us. But if we help, we get caught and worse things could happen. There's a pl safe place for us to hide up in the attic. We just gotta get there and we'll be okay. So a decision kind of came down. And what it ended up being was we couldn't let an innocent person like D fall for us. So knowing that, Dieth runs her at the front of the tavern and leaps out in midair, uh, throws a dagger in midair and like hits one of the lands on the ground, rolls forward and immediately throws another dagger and hits another one. It was super cool. Uh, because she was engaged with combat another one, someone else, uh, there was a sneak attack and immediately killed the guard. It was super rad. And then uh, my other friends came out and they're like, let's help them too. So they're also trying to fight guards. Uh, and then very quickly, more and more guards showed up and including the captains and Isaac himself, etc. And there's there just too many. At this point, if we, kept fight, if we kept fighting, we would all be killed. So we had to lay down our arms. Strix, on the other hand, being who she is, panicked, freaked out, and ran away. <laughs> just ran down the street, ran into some, some corners, and no one knows where she went. She's gone. She's no longer helping us. She, she, her hands were in the air going, Rah! she, she was gone. And I was like, well, that's great. Nah. The other party members were also able, uh, most of the other party members were able to get away. Uh, so it's myself, uh, our paladin and Evelyn were caught, uh, and our bard was drunk back at the tavern, passed out. So the two of us were caught. But however, within all that fight with against the guards trying to help D, only one guard was actually slain. And that was the one that I killed, the one that Dieth had killed. So because of that, I had to get uh, extra punishment. Evelyn was taken over to the uh, the sheriff's uh, the house or domain or office or whatever it was. Dieth, on the other hand, myself, was taken quickly to the stocks. So. Right, like in the middle of the town square, a large public area, do you have to the stocks where you know you put your head through, hands through to, and they put the wood down, and there he is, locked up, and I'm stuck like this. So Evelyn's off doing, I don't even know what, I don't even know what could possibly be happening, but I know I have to get out of here. Now, I am a rogue, so I am quite good at getting out of tricky situations, and being the dexterous person that I am, I was actually able to wiggle one arm out and actually go and get my lock picks and start trying to pick the locks to get myself out, which I thought was really, really smart. So I'm like, all right, I got this. I can get this myself out. While this is happening, a small child, we'll say eight, nine, 10 years old, uh, saw someone in the stocks. So you know what the most fun thing to do against someone in the stocks? Throw rocks at them. So I'm trying to do this and this kid's just 
pelting me in the face with freaking rocks. I'm just getting really, really pissed off. And as this is happening, I, I look over at him and I just say, hey kid, I'll kill you. Just, I'm just so mad. He didn't stop. Even with the threat, kept throwing rocks. So after like the fourth or fifth rock hit, I just said, all right kid, that's, that's fine, all right. You win, you get a prize. Do you want something tasty or something shiny? See, my plan at this point was to uh, give him some kind of gift in hopes that he would then go away and I could continue my escape. The kid said, something tasty. And I said, perfect. So wiggle my hand free and I reach into my pack and I take that pastry out that I got from the hags I had mentioned earlier, the one that dazes people once they eat it. And I take it and I toss it forward onto the ground. I say, there you go, kid. There's your prize, it's a tasty treat. Eat it up. My thought being, I'm gonna daze this dude so he'll leave me alone and I can continue my escape. Instead, the child sees me reach forward and toss it and he immediately yells, guard, his hand's free, he's getting out. And now I'm like, oh, you son of a, and I quickly put my hand back in really quick, just nah, nah, wasn't doing that. And then the guard shows up, tried to uh, investigate this child's claims and he shoes a kid off so he runs off somewhere. But then the guard ate the pastry. So he ate it though and he became dazed. So at least he got messed up by it. Unfortunately, his two other guard friends did not. And at that point, they uh, take me, they unlock me from the stocks and they bring me up and they bring Dieth and they bring me over to the gallows. And up onto the gallows, I go and they uh, put a noose around DF's neck. And during this time, uh, Evelyn had finished her conversations with Isaac and is basically saying, did convince them or said anything they wanted to to try to get back to me and help DF Woodrow. Now, one of the things I wanted to say is shortly after we actually entered Barovia, before we even got to the Hag Towers, before we made it to the town of Vallaki or anything of that, just walking around within this weird, bizarre uh, land, uh, along the pathway, the roads between villages, even on there, we found, uh, we came across some abandoned gallows earlier, just they hadn't been used in ages, and they were just empty, empty gallows. And I took a second look at it because I saw myself hanging there. I myself, Dieth, saw dead Dieth hanging from these abandoned gallows. And then when I turned to tell my friends and everyone looked back, gone. So it was like a really weird vision prophecy. I don't even know what, but I saw myself hanging and dead and that was terrifying. And now I'm in this situation, hands tied behind my back, noose around my neck. And they basically say, you know, any last words? Uh, and I had nothing, no plan to escape, nothing to get out. I can only hope for my friends to arrive. And with that, Lever was thrown, the floorboard drops, so does Dieth, and my longtime D&D character that I've always played, Dieth Woodrow, was hanged and killed. Now, for those of you who've been watching Dice Camera Action, you know that's not the end of the entire campaign, because just, one, just because one person dies doesn't mean the campaign ends, and this one certainly does. In fact, this one is still going. Uh, and if you want, you two can actually watch it because we're uh, doing the finale episode uh, tomorrow, December 7th at 4 p.m. Pacific time, uh, twitch.tv slash W-O-T-C underscore D&D if you want to watch it live. Now, if you want to go back and catch up on our adventures through uh, Curse of Strahd, which I really recommend, I'm having such a good time doing it. A lot of people have been enjoying it as well. Uh, you can just go to the official which is the Coast, the official Dungeons and Dragons YouTube channel, and all of our past episodes are also archived on there if you want to watch it there too. And I really recommend it because it's uh, a really great time. Uh, and then if you also want some more D&D action, I also recommend going back and watching last year's Dean December videos where I did plenty there. Or if you want even more from that, you can head over to my gameplay channel, Pro Jared Plays, and where I'll be playing different Dungeons and Dragons video games all month. And then you can find out what happens after my favorite character of all time that I've ever made gets killed and straight up dies. Thanks for watching.